Hey everyone, welcome to this CUBE conversation here in Palo Alto, California. I'm John Furrier, co-host of the CUBE. We're in the CUBE studios. Our next guest is Adam Weinstein, who's the CEO of a company called Cursor. So introducing Cursor, it's a hot startup growing in the data analytics space, doing something unique, very innovative around changing the game on data, data catalogs, but more importantly, how data is being used and consumed and also kind of revitalized. So Adam, welcome to theCUBE Conversation. Thanks for joining us. No, thanks for having me. It's excited to be here. So you guys are a young startup. Yep. Um, you're in a really good wave right now. Obviously cloud, data, the changing nature of data. Take a minute to explain what Cursor does. What's the company? Sure. What's the focus? How big? You raise money? Give sure. the update. Yeah, yeah. So I'll give you a quick background on me that sort of leads into that, right? So spent most of my career as an, as an analyst, you might say, right? So working with data, living in data, good, the bad, the ugly, right? Um, and, and spent last couple of years prior to this uh, at LinkedIn, working in an analytics team there. And you know, one of the challenges we had as an organization um, was, was you know, finding what was where and who worked on what. Uh, so when you had literally a thousand people across the company, that was 10% of the business, um, touching data on a daily basis, uh, one thing we struggled with was knowing you know, who was working on what, what was where, what was accurate, what was maybe outdated. Um, data was getting created at insane velocity. It was uh, talking earlier, literally we're creating a trillion events a day inside the business. And so, um, you know, as an analytics you know, practitioner, if you will, um, it, it became increasingly difficult to, to, to get to a quick answer. Um, there was no search to go and say, okay, I want to look for this question as I've been asked before, and if so, where's the data? So, uh, you know, there, there was this new space called data cataloging at the time that seemed interesting, but the cataloging uh, was really only looking at how do we create like a yellow pages of data? Um, not necessarily how do you put it in the workflow of the person that's then taking that and acting on it and then you know feeding that insight that they may have created back into that sort of catalog, if you will, right? So saw an opportunity to create something new that really supported an analyst and, and really was you know, mindful of how their day-to-day uh, -day job existed. Um, and and you know, that, was, that was Cursor, right? What's the role of the analyst now? Because one of the things that's challenging for the industry was this idea of, and you just go back five years, data science is the next big thing. There are more open jobs in data science than there are people. But then this also trend came on around humanizing data science and not requiring you to know hardcore uh, C++ or Python or sure. having all this wrangling environments, doing all this provisioning of, 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 of stuff to get started. There was idea of, okay, can we level up that? And also, can it make it easier? Almost like using Excel. Yeah, That's totally. been kind of the trend. What's your thought on the current state of the data analyst role? No, I, so I think that uh, there is a lot of analytics work that maybe five years ago you know, w was being done and, and there was no automation around it. And in the next five years, it'll get I wouldn't say automated away, but it'll be heavily automated away. Call it 80% of the workload. But that 20% use, uh, or 20% of data that, that really difficult to understand and, and may not be able to you know, get an answer out of it automatically, that, that's not, you know, that, that needs people. Uh, and someone that understands the business that's technical enough to go dive into the data. Um, and, and even though that may not be the 100% that existed before, the amount of like w effort that's needed to decipher it, I think is, is maybe even greater than it used to be just because the rate of data getting created is so much greater too. Um, hence the demand for more solutions. Yeah. So talk about Cursor. Um, how big are you guys? Who's sure. on the team? Yeah. What's the product? Is it SaaS? Is it software? Sure. Give a quick overview. No, great. Um, so we're, we're small. We're a seven person team right now. Uh, we started the company a little over a year and a half ago. Um, you know, the idea was to get a solution to market that uh, was, was lightweight enough that someone could come and download it and try it very quickly without having to go through a long enterprise sales cycle. They could you know, get something on their computer, literally stand it up in five minutes, start pointing it at data and having it you know, identify and, and help uh, with their day-to-day -day job. Um, the team is, is uh, all engineering minus me, right? So, um, you know, there's the, we have folks from Salesforce, where you know I came from a company called Exact Target that, that Salesforce bought, uh, Pandora, Thumbtack. We're basically, we try to bring people together that have all, you know, seen companies scale and data scale, um, and and you know bring those insights alongside them. So, first generation data scale, yep. the classic, you know, web scale, build it out on open source, grow it. Have yeah. things break, rebuild it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we, we certainly leverage some open source, but I think you know, for for us right now, it's really just how do we get something that's unique to market as quickly as possible, right? So if there's things that we can use that that are out there that are that are available, that are you know, especially if they're um, you know standardized, right? We'll, we'll make use of them. But other times, we'll you know, we've built quite a bit of uh, of stuff on our own. And you know, our solution lives. Um, it can live in the cloud. It can also live on premise, and, and actually see a lot of customers deploy it in a hybrid manner. So they may uh, have this sort of collaboration layer live in the cloud, but it's pointing at data that's both cloud-based and on-prem. And even though that data may get migrated to the cloud over the next several years, it 
you know, a lot of large enterprises are still. So are you guys split. going to market by selling a product, as freemium, yeah. what's the, and, and is it yeah. software they download on premise? Is it SaaS in the cloud? Yep. Talk about the go-to-market and how yep. people engage with the product. No, it's heavily SaaS in the cloud, right? So I think um, short of companies that are in a heavily regulated industry that really haven't yet figured out that cloud model. Um, you know, our, our products SaaS delivered. Uh, there is a client that lives on the user's local machine, and the reason that exists is just for security purposes because data is still often behind the firewall. So, like, you can ask your security guy, "Hey, poke a hole in the firewall for this company I've never heard of," or you can have a tool that lives on their machine that sort of brokers that in, in a thoughtful way. So you guys so are flexible. We're flexible, right? Um, you don't necessarily need that, right? If you deploy it in your own infrastructure. Um, Obviously, there's there's no need to then have that client. It can it can handle things. Directly. So why cursor? What are the market drivers for you guys? What's driving yeah. your business? Yeah, I think we, we saw this need, or as I say, I, I felt this need very acutely at LinkedIn, which is, you know, when, when analysts are getting you know hundreds or thousands of questions as a team on a, on a daily or weekly basis if they're in a large organization, how do you address some meaningful portion of those with automation? So if a question's been asked before and you've got you know great solutions like a Tableau or a Looker or a ThoughtSpot or you know, Power BI, like you've got tons of reporting solutions around the business, but there's no place to go and say, hey, where's the answer to this question? Which one of those is it in? Is it a Salesforce report? Is it a Tableau dashboard? Uh, and, and so you'd ask your friendly analyst who'd be happy to help, but like that's taking them away from doing things that are new. Yeah. And so uh, I, I kind of became that switchboard, unfortunately, and so uh, <laughs> saw an opportunity to create a solution that would sort of automate me, uh, and that's, that's really what Basically index all the questions, kind of see what the frequency was, the behavior yeah. of the analytics, kind of packaging it up in the catalog. Yeah, and, and taking it even a step further, right? Like, what are the topics? How do you map topics and understand, okay, there's a fire on aisle seven, and that fire happens to be churn, and it's Q3, and why is there a fire on churn? And how do we dig into the data behind churn and get some automated, automated insights around it? And then, you know, it, but yes, certainly the, the step one is being able to direct people in the right, to the right place. Once you get beyond that, though, to understanding where a company's data is and what the sort of, you know, size and shape and characteristics of it are, um, you can actually take it a step further and, and you know, really sort of recommend things, which is what we want so to do. So the alternative to not having like a data catalog and yeah. cursor uh, is to go ask your resident analyst or <laughs> hope that yep. someone posted something on Slack yep. and then you have to search through Slack. I mean, all kinds of, I mean, really not a, not a viable. No, it's, it's a hodgepodge of solutions, right? So one of the things we saw, and this is interesting having been at LinkedIn, is that you know more and more teams around the organization are hiring analyst talent. They may not call it an analyst, they might call it like a citizen data scientist, they might call it a researcher, uh, they might even call it an engineer, like a data engineer. Um, a lot of overlapping skills, and what the real need is, is like someone to be on that team that knows their data inside and out, but yet can uh, help answer, like you said, sort of the ad hoc question that comes up you know, every day. And, and so for that, like, you know, they can use cursor to answer 80% of those or you know, as many as possible, right? We, we, we think we've got a pretty good opportunity. It's interesting, I do see the same kind of uh, knee-jerk reaction. Hire the data analyst, <laughs> or whatever. Uh, when when they were, in LinkedIn and, and other clients that have a similar profile where they have a lot of data, yeah. I certainly see that. When they get hired, what's the kind of, what's the marching orders? Go jump into the data and figure it out? Is there, I mean, because this is kind of an evolving new position that's growing very, very fast. What are they directed to do? I mean, what's the, what's the job responsibility? Yeah, it's a great question. So, so I think one of the challenges is, is how do you onboard people when, when there is no place to start, right? Like it's, okay, here are the 100 places we store data. Uh, go figure it out, go learn on your own. Um, we had built a little bit of a training and onboarding uh, we call it, it really started as a PowerPoint deck and then it expanded into some code and some additional training. But um, you know, there is no solution for that, right? I think uh, our, our, uh, internally we had this notion that you know, somewhere between three and six months the person was ramped enough to begin to be productive. It was like how, we, how do you measure ROI on a person when you hire them, right? Um, and that was LinkedIn where I think we were pretty, you know, we were yeah. out here, we, you know, we have uh, you know, quite a few nerds, right? Like I think we're pretty good at, 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 at organizing things, relatively speaking. I can't imagine what that's like. Productivity, just write some Python code, spit out some answers. Is that good <laughs> enough? That yeah. kind of like guessing, yeah. or sink or swim kind of mentality, and mm. then the, you know, then get someone else in there. Yeah, and, and the nuance of the data has gotten, just because everyone's mindset is record everything, right? Like, uh, it becomes harder and harder to actually get a quick answer, right? So I'm going to give you an example. like. You know, looking at data, do you know if something's, you know, test data, if it's, you know, fake data, if it's, uh, you know, if there's something you need to be mindful of, like in e-commerce, how do you account for returns? How do you account for, you know, fraud? How do you account for things that, you know, if you look at the data and say, I just want to add up all my orders and get some total amount of receipts, like you would think, oh, that's my sales for the day. But then you forget, like there are all these things that if you don't know the data really well, that you, know, you miss out on. And so yeah. uh, multiply that by, you know, large corporate What's scale. the phrase, a needle in a stack of needles? Kind of <laughs> trying to find like everything in there. So, yeah. I mean, data structures, data cleanliness. Yep. These are huge issues. 
huge. Um, and, and you know, we won't address every single one of them, right? I think where Cursor wants to sit is in between a lot of best of breed solutions, right? So we're not building a new Hadoop. We think Hadoop does a great job of, of storing data, whether you want to call it a lake or you know, something beyond a lake, right? Like, you know, there are plenty of data stores in an organization that do a great job at storing data. You know, on the opposite end of the spectrum, like in terms of visualizing data or actually generating, you know, insights, there are great BI solutions on the market. But in between those two sort of you know, ends of the spectrum, there's a lot of work yeah. that gets done and that's where we want to live. Adam, talk about the um, innovation and the tech behind Cursor. Sure. And then just inno innovation in general, the way you see it and the team sees it, because sure. you're on the front range of a new trend, yeah. uh, bleeding edge, cutting edge, whatever you want to call it. Certainly sure. you're pushing the envelope. Yeah. No, what's, the what's the core tech for Cursor? Sure. Where's the innovation lie? How does it all tie together? Sure, so we have a, you know, a couple different deployment models, but our, our you know, most common one is we have a, you know, a cloud layer that enables collaboration. So anytime a, a company is using our product, uh, you know, metadata, we don't ever look at company data. That's one promise we've made because you know, we want to work in regulated industries. We want to be in places where you know, there are high security environments, but we never push actual data to the cloud, but metadata about a company's data. So you know, what's the name of a column? You know, what's the name of a database? Who's used it? How often have they used it? What dashboard names are using? All those kinds of things get pushed to our cloud. Um, you know, we, we use a, a language called Kotlin, which is a Java derivative to, to write most of our backend code, uh, mostly because a lot of legacy data stores are, are you know, designed to inter interoperate with Java. Um, and then you know, we, we have a client component that lives on a user's machine, and that's what facilitates a lot of the day-to-day -day work. Uh, and we do that just for security purposes, because, you know, because most data is behind a firewall, whether it's cloud-based or not, is you know, I guess independent of that, it's oftentimes not publicly accessible. We can't expect our cloud will be able to get directly to it, right? Whether we're at AWS, GCP, or, or Azure, we can work with any of them. Um, you know, we we uh, you know expect that the company security policies require some sort of you know local connectivity, um, and so that's you know that that client uh, is actually just a product called Electron that wraps uh, you know our React front end. So very very common um, you know paradigms. You know, I think we try to pick packages that we think have some staying power because. You know, every time the wind blows, there's a new framework that's you know the latest and greatest. So uh, that's that's us. Awesome. Talk about the program. marketplace yeah. and customer interactions you have. Obviously, sure. you guys are a year and a half into this or sure. so. Um, what's the feedback? What are you seeing? What are yeah. you learning? What are the key signals from the marketplace that you're seeing yeah. that's supporting your sure. company, the direction you're going? Share some anecdotes and data around sure. what you're seeing and hearing. So when we launched the, the the first version of the product, it was last May. And what we were trying to do was get something out there in the wild that anybody could try and, and get value out of without having to go through, like I said, sort of a long enterprise sales cycle. So download it, you can use it, you can share it with the guy next to you. Think of like an Evernote or a Google Drive style approach to actually being able to do something. And uh, you know, so that, that had some great success, right? We went out with announcement, we announced we had you know, fun with the company. Uh, we roughly, we got about 1,500 users in the first four months just that we're trying it. And it was across about four to 500 companies, so four-ish, five-ish users of a company. Um, and that let us get a bunch of feedback, which was great, right? Some of it was, hey, we don't like this, and other was, hey, double down here. Um, and, and, and the key thing that we learned was there are sort of three audiences that we're serving, right? One is that traditional analyst, which you know, hopefully that was the case because that's where, where I came from and that was the goal. Um, there's also two other audiences I didn't expect as much of. One uh, being software engineers, uh, and software engineers that you know, are constantly pulled in to like, you know, like you said, find the needle on the pile of needles. Um, and they don't want that to be their day job, but they do want to like, do it once and then share it with the rest of the organization and they don't have a place to do that today. So there's a, pilot, there's a great great uh, you know, audience of software engineers. And then the last one is actually business leaders that are the ones asking the questions and they want to find a place that they can go to that you know, will answer the majority of them. And so um, the feedback we've gotten is that there's probably three skins of the product that we're going to have to build. One's for that analyst, the second's a little bit more technical for an engineer, and the third is actually very business friendly, which is just, you know, you don't care about SQL code, you don't want Python code, you don't want any code at all, you just want to know the reports here, or if it's not, ask Danny. Um, that's interesting, so the feedback from the marketplace is kind of lays out the workflow stakeholders. Yeah. yeah. You know, the analyst has got to do their job and doesn't yeah. want to be coding, so they bring the coder in. Coders so wants to get, put, gets pulled into the project, so they're doing their thing, and they certainly want to get back to their coding, but get pulled in for business reasons. Right. Then the business guy wants to search and discover. Yeah. Kind of all kind of coming together. That seems to be the stakeholders. It's the stakeholders, exactly right. I mean, I think it's it almost lines up probably engineer, analyst, business leader, right? Like, and, and, and the engineer oftentimes is the one that has to go build a pipeline if that's what's <laughs> needed, right? And the analyst is the one that consumes from it, and the business leader is the one that looks at the report every morning and says, oh, yeah. that's bad. <laughs> um, and really what you're getting down to is classic software development kind of thinking sure. of sure. DevOps and cloud computing, which is yeah. you, don't, you want to automate repetitive tasks, yeah. and you don't want one-offs. 
right? So engineers yeah. want to do one-offs, a constant one-off pipelining. Yep, yep, no, that you hit the nail on the head. Like I think, you know, it, it, like the whole notion of like self-service BI or self-service data, like it, it, it's aspirational. I think it will be forever, right? Even as you get into AI and like, yes, automated AI and, and you know, a certain percentage of problems will always be able to be automated, but a certain percentage won't be, right? We'll just get more. Well, your point about the reporting is it's only good as the data being reported. So you might feel good that you're looking at a dashboard, but <laughs> if <the> underlying data <laughs> is not sucks, good. then you're like, you're dead in the water. That's, uh, that's a very true thing. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> we, we, we saw that, you know, not just LinkedIn, like every company feels that, right? All right, talk about the environment and customer base, okay? Sure. As, as you worked at LinkedIn, which I think is a very acute example because, yeah. you know, LinkedIn is one of those magical companies where <laughs> they really hit the data equation really well. Obviously, it's like a resume uh, for recruiters and it turned into a social network. Yeah. And then they got a treasure trove of data, all kinds of gesture data. They got great metadata on profiles. Now they got a, a feed. Yeah. So again, it's, it's like Facebook, they got all this, this data. Yeah. So the unknowns probably got came came piling in. So it's a great yeah. proxy for as enterprises and businesses start thinking about how to think about the tsunami of new kinds of data, not just growth in data, but right. like, hey, there's all kinds of new data, mobile, yeah. touch point, gesture data, all this kind of stuff's coming together. Yeah. How should they think about setting up a plan? Yeah. So if I'm a customer, I say, hey, you know, I got all this data, I got cube interview data, I got consumption data, I got all these new things, and what do I do? Yeah. How do I create a holistic architecture yep. to take advantage of the different data silos or data sets Yep. but yet not screw up the operations of those data. Yeah. What's the, what's Business your, can't stop, right? Yeah, what's your advice on that? Because that seems to be yeah. a core problem. It is, and, and you know, one of the things I think I've come to believe is that you know, companies will get together and they'll spend months or even years coming up with like an architecture of the future, right? And, and I don't believe that you can come up you know, and sit in a room, no matter how many days it takes, and come up with something that's going to be you know, all things to all people. Like you're going to, you basically need solutions that are nimble enough to be, to be you know, uh, installed and, and get value very, very quickly, even if it's just a small amount of value, and then grow with you over time. So, Cursor, that's sort of the way we're set up, right? Like, you know, you can come have a small team, so take take a marketing operations team. They work with advertising data they're dealing with. How do you get, you know, a, a lead and convert them into a sale? Um, they can use, you know, a product like Cursor, or I think any other good product in the marketplace should be, you know, designed in this way, where you, you, you nibble on it, you get some value, and then you deploy it to other teams once you've learned how to, how to best do that. Um, I think the, the like big bang approach of like, hey, this is our solution that's going to, you know, work for everyone is is, is really tough. So pick an area we can get time to value quicker. Right, right. And is it like a data lake model where you just kind of throw some data into one corpus or so we connect API based? Right? So data doesn't actually live ever within cursor, right? We may, you know, if you're actually operating on it, say you're an analyst and you're writing some Python, and you're writing some SQL, like yes, we, you know. For the sake of seeing it in the UI, it will temporarily be cached and encrypted there, but we never actually store any company data. We just point to it, and, and, when, and, and what we've built are these really intelligent connectors that can go mine what's there. So if we're looking at a Tableau uh, instance, we can say, okay, here are all the dashboards there, here are all the code behind those dashboards, here are the table and the data stores those dashboards are hitting. Yeah. Here's how often they're consumed. Oh, every Monday morning at 9 a.m., 250 people in New York hit this dashboard, and how do we learn from that, and then hopefully make recommendations on it? Like, what happens when data underlying a dashboard changes every Monday morning and then all of a sudden it doesn't. Should there be a red flag somewhere that you know, we should tell somebody that, hey, there's probably an issue with this. So we, we're, we're trying to really learn from things that are already there today as opposed to having you create new things. And that's What's next? What's going on now? How are you going forward? What's the yeah. key objectives for you guys? Yeah, so I think there's two things, right? As, as an early stage business, like you can get uh, sort of pulled into this, hey, we want to be a generic solution for everything. What we found is that there's probably a couple industries that are really uh, they feel this problem really acutely, and, and some of it's financial services and actually retail, surprisingly, just given the you know, dispersion of data inside retail. So we've had pretty good success in both of those areas, and I think our uh, next step will be to actually probably formalize some uh, you know, sort of playbooks, if you will, and, and continue down that path. And then integrations are the, are the next thing, right? Like, you know, we integrate with a bunch of stuff, but we definitely don't integrate with everything, and there's you know, an infinite amount of tools out there, right? So we want to continue to, to you know, partner with companies that have you know, best of breed solutions, uh, work with them to create deep integrations. We're not trying to displace them, we're just trying to you know, complement them and help drive you know, the, the, the traffic to them that's looking for what's in there. And uh, So like that integration work uh, is, is really never ending. Why should a company give up the old way to bring in the new way? What's your, what's your yeah, advice yeah, on so that? Yeah, so I don't think they're necessarily having to give up the old way. I think it's, you know, th there are some things that you're going to naturally be transitioning off of, right? There's, there's always going to be a BI solution that transitions from, you know, legacy to new, whatever legacy may be defined as. Um, and as you're doing that, th th there's, there's, there's this missing ingredient, I feel like, of how do I track what's where when. Um, you could say that that was sort of solved by data catalog, so I think the old data catalog is kind of dead. Yeah. And I think what's really happening is that you need something that works with 
you know, where you are in e every day, uh, whether you're an analyst, a business leader, or an engineer, right? Um, and they, they can follow you along, not disrupt you from your day-to-day -day workflow, and also be intelligent about what's what, what's where, and that that's sort of what we're trying to build. Well, great to chat. Thanks for coming and spending the time. Talk about Cursor. No. And congratulations on the venture. No, thanks. Looking forward to seeing that B round coming soon. Yeah. Right? yeah well, thanks for having <laughs> me very much. <laughs> it's coming soon. B round. Uh, a round. A round. A so we round. Have a seed round, and yeah, okay. a, a will definitely be on the on the near term horizon. Adam Weinstein, CEO, Cursor, serial entrepreneur here inside the Cube, innovating around the data. This is the new model. This is what's going on. It's the new wave that they're riding. I'm John Furrier with the Cube. Thanks for watching.